Uh, my name's Darren Swift. I'm an SE at Zerto. Um, today, I'd just like to give you an overview of Zerto, a 50,000 foot view, if you've never heard of us before. Um, and I'd also just like to dive into the software as well to show you exactly what I'm talking about in the slides, and we can perhaps get some more questions around this. Um, so what is Zerto? Um, Zerto is a disaster recovery company. We're a virtual only company, so we specify in software only. And we do both enterprise class replication BCDR for both on-premise workloads and also public and hybrid clouds. Um, a little bit about Zerto. We've been around for four years. Um, over that time, we've amassed a significant amount of customers. So we've got 1,000 on-premise customers using Zerto. We also have over 200 cloud service providers. Um, our CSPs use us to deliver disaster recovery as a service to their end users. So if you do not want to fund a secondary data center, you can point this to one of our CSP partners. Um, and let's just think about enterprise replication. Um, traditionally, when you think about enterprise replication, not to do much of a history lesson here, but we usually stick with storage-based replication. And there are the downsides to this. Storage-based replication is designed for a physical world. You are failing over or failing over testing virtual machines on LUNs. There's also another element to this, is that you're locked into those two storage vendors. So if you want buy storage vendor A and you want to replicate, then you need storage vendor B because you need a matching pair. Now, typically, what you would do is map something like VMware SRM on top of this to understand the physical and the virtual connection. The issue with that is that you are, you're overcomplicating DR. I like to think that disaster recovery is a, is a necessary evil. It's like car insurance. We all need it. We don't necessarily use it all the time, but it should be as simple as possible. If you can take anything away from this presentation today, I'd just like you to take away that disaster recovery with Zerto is not complex. It is simple. And that's the only thing I want you to take away. And I will show you this in the demonstration. So what does Zerto do, which is so different? We place replication and also an automation engine within the hypervisor layer. Now, this frees up the dependency on storage below. So to the point before with a whole software defined story, you should be free to move to different vendors to take advantages of Pernix data and fast speeds and move it around at your choice. With the automation layer, we also automate a lot of the manual processes you normally associate with disaster recovery. OK, so let's have a look at actually what Zerto is doing. So we've got this notion now of multi-hypervisor. Um, traditionally, over the last four years, and we've won many awards, as you can see on there, we have played with VMware. So we replicate virtual machines on a VMware hypervisor between data centers. As we were just discussing on the panel, Hyper-V is becoming more and more prominent in the marketplace. Who, who's using Hyper-V at the moment? Anyone? Yeah? Was that based on cost, or was that for the feature set? Um, it's quite a long time ago. OK. OK, thank you. Um, so you know, most people I speak to at the moment are either experimenting with Hyper-V, or the thinking that the next two to three years when their VMware is up for refresh, I might use Hyper-V for some of my infrastructure. So we allow you the ability to replicate between Hyper-V hypervisors. More interestingly for me, though, is the ability to replicate between Hyper-V and VMware and VMware and Hyper-V. So we are actually doing at Zerto cross-machine translation between the hypervisors. The upshot being that your VMware admins can sit there and administer Zerto through vCenter even though Hyper-V is being replicated into their production data centers. Where is the use case for this? I see two use cases. Um, new data centers, satellite offices, remote branch offices, depots, using Hyper-V, replicating into your VMware production data centers. But also for migration purposes. Because we're taking care of all of the conversion of the disks and the settings, there is no need to do any manual actions on the side of this. We've already discussed the satellite offices. Now, with Zerto, you'll see a lot of one-to-one -one mappings on my slides. This is not a limitation. We can have many sites coming into one. Our CSPs use us because we are a multi-tenanted solution. So 
we can actually multi-tenant separate off disaster recovery for tenant A, push service profiles, permissions down to that end user, and also provide a self-service portal. So as me as an end customer, it's a completely hands-off disaster recovery solution, but I know I'm getting the service. More interestingly, from the panel that we just discussed with Amazon Web Services, in our 4.0 version, we have the ability to replicate on-premise workloads, either VMware or Hyper-V, into Amazon Web Services. Again, two use cases, migration or a very cheap alternative for a disaster recovery site. With our Amazon Web Services and the way that Zerto works that I'll get into in a moment, we only require one server to be turned on in your EC2 layer. That means if you're replicating 100 VMs from your on-prem into Amazon Web Services, you're only being charged the block level replication in S3. So you're not being charged per hour per CPU for all of those servers being turned on. It's only when we fail over or do a failover test that we actually interact with this. Um, and I just wanted to cut in on this because we've talked a lot about containers. Um, we've talked a lot about application portability. And absolutely, as Zerto is developing and progressing in the industry, we see us as being the application portability layer. Because it is so easy to encapsulate your existing virtual machines with Zerto, the idea is that you can point them to whichever cloud you wish based on SLA, cost, risk, terms, all the stuff that we just uh, discussed in the panel. Later next year, you will see us come in on Windows Azure and Google. Right now, um, we can go in and out of Amazon and obviously cross hypervisors. But this is part of our Zerto cloud continuity platform. And over here as well, this is an area that we're also discussing, next generation applications, software as a service. Is Zerto's um, ambition to be the protection layer for your applications wherever you may point them? So let's actually have a look at the architecture here. So first thing you should know about Zerto is software only. You download the software from our website and you can install it in under one hour. Um, I kid you not with this, we do not send professional services to site who sit there playing with storage for three weeks. We can install in one hour. We install two main components. One is a Zerto Virtual Manager. As the name would suggest, this is a manager which looks into your relevant hypervisor manager, either VC or system center. From there, we deploy virtual replication appliances, which are one vCPU, one to three gigs of RAM, Debian Linux, automatic OVF imports, on to your ESX nodes. We do this one per ESX node. If the ZVM is there for the management and the GUI, the VRAs are responsible for splitting out the writes and doing compression between the two sites. Which brings me on nicely to the five megabytes that you see there. We are an asynchronous technology, so we can go over geo distances, hence how we can go into clouds. Um, being an async technology also gives us some significant advantages of how we intercept the I.O. coming through the VMware I.O. stack. We do not require to acknowledge to all the different components, therefore we do not slow down your applications. Um, we can do compression, and we're also doing point in time recovery. Now, I'm not gonna labor on about this too much, but we use a journal-based technology which I'm just gonna to go to the next slide on. We do continuous data protection. So we're not using snapshots and we are not using VMware's change block tracking. We are storing the changes as they come down from the virtual machines in a journal file on the target site. Now think of this as just a cycle of change. So every few seconds we're placing checkpoints of your application in this journal. The great thing about this is I can roll my application back to just a few seconds ago or I can go all the way back to 14 days ago now with Zerto. So your RPO and your RTO is extremely granular for your applications. As we're an async technology, we have an RPO of seconds and an RTO of minutes. So it gives you extreme granularity to do this. And Zerto has been designed to be a very low touch solution. So the journal files are created automatically and they're also self-managed, so they grow and shrink automatically according to the change rates of your virtual machines. <clears throat> As we already mentioned, we are storage agnostic, 
And between your hypervisors, we're also doing the conversion. So if you're going from VMware to Hyper-V, we are doing the VM disk conversion. And then all the adapters on that virtual machine are being um, converted when we do a failover or a failover test. Um, one of the ways that we do our replication is we group our vi virtual <coughs> machines into a VPG. Now, we know that a uh, application consists of more than one server, right? This is consistency grouping. But what we're doing is we're ensuring consistency. So if I take a CRM application with 10 servers, I place it into a VPG, I can do some things with it. I can ensure that all the servers within that VPG are brought back to the exact same point in time out of my journal. So there is no more of this using the mix index to try and find out which RPOs, RTOs my machines are at. I can also enforce an SLA at this level. So Zerto absolutely protects tier one applications. It also can protect tier two and tier three, which may not need as aggressive service levels. Um, we can protect across any host or storage. And at this point is really is, when you're using VMware SRM or another product, you have to move your virtual machines onto a LUN because ultimately SRM is controlling physical replication underneath. With Zerto, as long as the ESX can see the VM, we can group them together. So there is no migration up front. We also have a pre-seed feature. Um, if you have your data at each site, we do not have to do the initial sync. Um, during the install of Zerto, it is completely non-intrusive. So you do not require host reboots. All you need is admin credentials to install. Um, and the initial synchronization, getting your data from A to B, implores I.O. throttling algorithms, i.e., we go at the speed of your storage. If we start to see latency, we will start to throttle back. So it is designed to be non-impactful to production from the ground up. I'm, I'm going to go to this um, in my actual demo, um, but this is a continuous data protection. Now, if you think about using snapshots, you may take snapshots four or five times a day, and you've got a certain amount of time between them. With CDP, as you can see, we're taking them every five seconds in this case. And this protects us against logical failures, security breaches, someone deleting their photo album, you know, an important person in the organization. We can roll that application back to just a few seconds ago. Yes? How can you do VSS integrated uh, or application consistent snapshotting every five seconds? So it's a great question. Because the guests wouldn't do it every five seconds. Exactly. It's a great question. Um, so we, op we offer crash consistency and application consistency. So I'll, I'll reverse this with a customer story. Large service provider came to me and said, I need application consistency for my applications. I asked why. They've always done it that way. They don't know any different. The crash consistency is a marker in the journal. Your virtual machines are brought back in the exact same way as they are with application consistency, but you're going to have a margin of data loss because we're an async technology. So in the case of that there, um, the service provider decided that crash consistency was more um, suited to their organization because they can rewind to just a few seconds ago rather than facing data loss up to X amount of hours ago back to their last snapshot. But absolutely, most people use a combination of VSS and crash consistency. The question actually goes to, I see it's checked, the VSS box is checked, and you're still doing snapshots every five seconds. No. Technically, that would not work. No, 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 no. This isn't being done every five seconds. This is a filter for the view below. I'll explain in a moment in the demo, if that's OK. Um, on this slide here, I'd just actually like to get into the actual demonstration so I can show you the software. And perhaps some of these concepts will become a little bit more clear. Um, I mentioned at the start that we automate a lot of the disaster recovery process. And I'd just like to show you this in the actual software. So this is the actual Zerto software. Um, we can see along the top, um, it might be a little hard to read at the back, apologies. Um, I've got two VMware environments. I have a Hyper-V environment. And I've also got an Amazon Web Services account at the end. The screen that we're looking at here shows the amount of applications I'm protecting 
across the number of virtual machines, covering the amount of storage and the average RPO across my data centers. Now, with the virtual protection groups, um, we can do so many things that when we create them. Now, creating a virtual protection group doesn't need to be difficult. The Zerto GUI is just designed to simply come through. And we just select the virtual machines out of the vCenter inventory in this case, and we place them together. So my CRM applications will all be recovered to the exact same point in time. I mentioned the automation. We can do defined boot orders. So does my database server come up first with a time delay? then my file server, then my application server, et cetera. We then simply choose a site where we'd like to go. Now within my sites in here, I have AWS LinkedIn, and I also have a Boston, which we're just gonna go to. From this point in, I can just simply select the data store. Sorry, my screen's being very slow. There we go. Um, and from here, we can then look at the actual VMs and decide what we do with the disks underneath. Now, in the case of um, databases, you may not want to replicate temporary databases, for instance. They consume bandwidth. They consume um, cost on your line. We would mark these down as swap disks within Zerto. And we can also separate out where your uh, hard disks are going to be recovered to in the target data store. We're then just gonna simply select some networks, um, and I'll get to this in a moment. On the network interface cards on each VM, we can decide whether they need to be re-IP'd, change MAC addresses at the other side. This would be very apt if you're going between clouds. You may need to re-IP your applications on the other side. We also have a backup feature. Now, um, I didn't mention this in the presentation. Um, Zerto, first and foremost, is a disaster recovery company. Are we going to set the world on fire being the best backup provider? No. Are we going to have some really cool features coming in next year, at the end of this year? Absolutely. Um, we give you the option, if you're replicating from site A to B, to take a backup from B and point it to a third and final site. So this is a third and final gold copy of your data that you can have if you do have that inevitable. Well, highly unlikely double failure between your two sites. Later in the year, we'll be bringing single level file restore and incremental backups with this. This is our first iteration of the backups. It's our V1, if you like. Um, but this has been driven by users such as yourselves. Zerto relies heavily on feedback from its customers. So we pump that time into development to give the features that customers want. So we're just gonna hit done there and we're just gonna walk through these screens here. We can see that my virtual protection groups here, where I'm replicating to, I'm meeting my SLA and my current RPOs. We can see the virtual machines I have set up, the sites, and we also integrate completely with monitoring into vCenter or SCVMM. Now, one of the things with this is if we come to do a failover test, we can non-disruptively test failover into a cloud or into another data center at any one time. So we do not interrupt the continuous data protection of your production data going to the DR site. Now to answer your question here, Hans, with the, uh, the VSS and the checkpoints, we are not taking snapshots, VSS snapshots every five seconds. We are doing crash consistent points in time. And what the journaling technology does is it maintains the right order of fidelity across this. So it means that the data comes back in the same way that it was written. So with crash consistency, you get that out of the box straight away. If you want VSS and your company absolutely requires application consistency, we can do that, but we wouldn't do it every five seconds because we would kill that application. End users would be sat there clicking and nothing would ever happen, right? So this is the advantage to crash consistency. You are not pausing the IO to those customers or your end users and you're getting that enhanced level of granularity. So we're just gonna start this failover test and when you do this failover test, Zerto goes through a lot of the operations that you would normally do. First of all, we register the VMX file 
in vCenter, and then we attach the disks from the point in time from the journal that you selected. We then do any re-IPs, change MAC addresses, run any pre and post scripts, and we finally boot the machines in the order which you specified on that VPG creation. All told, this allows you to get to the testing phase a lot easier. So it allows you to bring up your virtual machine and actually see whether that point in time is correct. Now the failover test is fantastic for testing disaster recovery, don't get me wrong, but what if you wanted to test a patch, an upgrade? Exactly, you can use this. Every customer I go into maybe test the eye once or twice a year. Um, with this, it's given you the ability to test whenever you want, it's non-disruptive. What we actually do on the back end is we create a scratch thin VMDK where the writes go to from this virtual machine. So you can actively send changes and updates patches to these machines. Once you're finished testing, we can simply come into the Zerto GUI and we can stop the failover test and Zerto automatically removes that VM from the inventory, cleans up all the changes and the disks that we have consumed. As we can see here, I can just come through, stop the test, and the actions will be cleaned up. Now, the only difference between a test and a live failover with Zerto is a test is brought up in a bubble network. How long have I got, Enrico? Five, OK. Um, we bring the uh, virtual machines up in a test environment so you can actively go and test without impacting production. If we go and do a live failover, We have a couple more options. We have this notion of a auto commit. Now, in the event that you do choose to fail over, you've had a really bad day in your source site and you need to fail over. Whether that's you that makes that decision or the business is entirely up to you. But when you fail over, you want to have the flexibility to rewind and fast forward through that journal. So we have this auto commit feature basically means that we will preserve the journal whatever point in time you pick for a period of time. So if you suddenly go through all the operations that I just went through and you find that your virtual machines are not at the correct point, your data is inconsistent, there's an error, you can simply roll back the operations and go backwards or forwards through that journal. So it's not a one shot, pick the last snapshot, hope and pray that it works on the other side, it is giving you that flexibility. And it goes through all of the same points that we went through before, doing the failover test. There is absolutely no difference with it. When we go into Hyper-V, the same thing occurs. What we're actually doing when we're doing Hyper-V replication is if you think, we're just doing block level replication underneath. We preserve that disk in the native hypervisor format and we send the blocks to it. Upon a failover test like I've just done, all the settings, the network interface cards on those machines get converted to the relevant hypervisor level or state. The upshot is, this is designed to be extremely simple. Um, with Zerto, we have a full reporting capability. So whenever you do a failover, a failover test, we do an audit and compliance trail so that you can present this to your boss, your end users, your customers, and this becomes very useful when you're going into cloud environments discussing SLAs, discussing price points. Um, with that, I've got one final slide. Um, so just to go through, um, Zerto is enterprise in class. We can cope with one outages, we can cope with one contentions. We're hypervisor-based virtual aware. We're for all clouds. We are storage and hypervisor agnostic, and most importantly, we are not using VMware snapshots, and we have an RPO of seconds and an RTO of minutes. We're using continuous data protection. We can click to failover test at any time. We do include an offsite backup feature, and we can install in minutes without downtime. Most of my customers install proof of concepts before they even try Zerto, and most are massively impressed with A, simplicity of doing disaster recovery, check, and the automation. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your time today. And if there is any questions, I am here all day. Thank you.